Hello, it's Tom Wright Art here again. I am with Jo Catlow Morris and I'm the artistic director of Mad Mother Productions. And what's Mad Mother Productions? Excuse me, but I don't really know. Yeah, okay, no worries. So in November 2017, actually August 2017, I decided to quit my job and set up my own production company. Amazing. So that I could write, devise, um, perform. Um, subjects that I'm passionate about without feeling the shackles of kind of the politics of employment and so on. So, so oh, that's, 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 that's an amazing thing to do. Similar to what I've done, leave the nine to five and yeah. follow your passions. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I knew a couple of the ladies, I don't know if you know about the fracking site down at Preston Lee Road. Oh, I do, yes. So kind of, it's kind of been quite high profile just recently in the news. Yes, Vivian Westwood went yeah, there, Vivian didn't she? Vivian Westwood came down, because she lose track of time, but probably some of the time just Christmas, maybe yes. uh, sort of November time. And there were some people that went to jail that was on the trucks, there were, weren't there? Yeah, there was the three guys um, who were um, convicted of um, the offence of um, the public highways and so on um, because they uh, lorry surfed and they were uh, committed to, I think, 15 and 16 months between the three of them um, had those sentences but after a judicial review which was about two weeks after they were um, incarcerated at Preston um, it was found that the trial um, had not been, um, the, the, the sentence wasn't fair and I think it was, I can't remember the exact uh, way that the judge at the High Court put it but it was unjustly harsh in terms of you are, um, yeah. And have you turned that into like an art project? I have, not specifically about those guys, or not about those guys at all, but about the ladies who um, have been protesting down at PNR and have been active um, since about 2012, but particularly from about 2014 when they first took the field um, where the fracking site is in terms of protest. Right, yeah. And they um, termed themselves or called themselves the Lancashire Nanners because they modelled themselves on that kind of um, the landlady ma matriarchal yes. kind of look, the turbans, the tabards, um, using the yellow anti fracking colours as, oh, the, as the tabards. And they've got amazing stories to tell. You know, they were seen as professional activists, and of course, when they started, they were and still are mothers, aunts, daughters doctors, teachers, barbers, artists, all sorts of different women um, but were vilified as which women throughout the ages in protest have been the suffragettes, the women at Green and Common. So I started chatting to one of them who's a good friend of mine and her story was so engaging and so empowering that I thought I bet nearly every one of these women if not all have got a tale not similar but in the same vein to tell. So I interviewed 11 of the nanas and I became um, fairly active for the cause as well. Um, there is a, um, a call for calm every Wednesday, which is a female um, protest where everyone wears white for peace and for calm, just to bring a little bit of um, kind of thought and soul into the whole protest wow. that's happening. So that really inspired me, to be honest. And after I interviewed each of the ladies, my process was that I listened, obviously, back to their interviews, which the interviews were around about 20 minutes each. I then wrote them verbatim by hand um, and then played about with them in terms of, so for example, because when we're chatting, we talk about A and then we talk about B and then C and then we go back to A and then we jump to Z. So I kind of collated it and put it into a semblance of order yeah. and then um, turned it into a more theatrical and creative piece, but still keeping the truth and the essence of what they And, and where me. did that end up showing? So after I... Um, kind of written it and developed it and also developed some expressionistic physical pieces as well. We first we did the first developmental performance of the Grand Theatre Studio on November 14th or 15th um, last year, 2018, so about three months ago. Uh, Ruby here at the space uh, played part of Leslie for me, which was fantastic, and I had a group 
of actors, um, including myself, which wasn't the plan, but due to one of the actors having to drop out for personal reasons, the last minute I had to step in and actually really, really enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. I hadn't yeah. performed for years and years, I've only directed, but I, I was kind of dreading it, but I did really enjoy it. Um, and it's in two halves. It's in the colours of the camp, which um, embodies the first um, action, as I mentioned just previously when they first took the field. Um, just kind of as, as quickly as I can tell you, they took the first field under the darkness in August 2014. And they set up gazebos, tables, um, tablecloths, china cups, and saucers, tea, bunting, yeah. as though there was a, a, a Women's Institute tea party. And when the sun rose on the August morning, the security were greeted by this vision of Lancashire Nana sat drinking tea and eating cakes. Wow, I bet that was what, amazing. It would have been, I wasn't there, but the, the story was told to me. So the first act is set around the camp and the stories are told between the women. We had five actors, including myself, but also seven members of the NAMS community. I was going to ask that. With us. So that community yeah. engagement was a really yeah. huge part of it, and incredibly and, empowering for those real. Part of it as well. So the stories empowered me, but being part of telling their stories. Um, and seeing the women tell their stories whilst they were on stage um, in all sorts of different ways. You know, set to music, recorded, um, we do a dance at the gates called the Elm Dance, which is um, a piece of, um, I suppose, protest uh, dance that was put together after Chernobyl to show solidarity with the people of Chernobyl, but it's travelled all through the world. And we included the dance in the piece with um, Olive's story, actually, um, spoken above the music and the dance. So the second act is women in white. Um, it's all greens and whites and um, which right, kind yeah. of especially the stage in the first act. So where we're at at the moment is that I've been asked by quite a number of people, will I be doing it again in Blackpool? So that wasn't the initial plan, but I think because of um, kind of popular demand, um, we may do another night at the end in um, May. I'm going to sort of look into that and see what the interest is. Um, but at the moment, I'm developing it for radio broadcast and also for the festival. So, so it's got lots of different guises. It's a theatre piece. It can be an installation piece for festivals. Um, it can be a radio script. And ultimately, I hope for it to be a screenplay. Yeah. Because the, the monologues that I've written are such great character studies that they can now be embodied into a piece of scripted theatre. So, well so you got any other more projects in the pipeline? I've only got that. It's such a massive project and it's got yeah. so many kind of branches to it that yeah. really I'm, I'm, I'm just concentrating on that. I have another string to my bow. I'm a, I'm a vocal trainer, not, not singing but speaking. Oh, wow. Um, and I've just set up a new which my poster was written in some but it's all been moved around, called Engage Your Voice. Right. So, and that's not just for actors, but for anyone who wants to I think I'll need to join that because I, I've literally decided yeah. to do this YouTube channel because yeah. I've arrived in Blackpool and I'm blown away by the, yeah. the scene and as somebody said to me yesterday you're not a reporter but I thought well why not be a reporter yeah, but I, I, I actually covered Dotty's show um, yeah. which we actually at the space um, and I didn't know what I was doing really yeah. and I used a few words that when I watched it back I thought mm, maybe not not quite the um, way to, it's so it's a learning curve, process it? but I, I want all the mistakes on yeah. this I want the learning curve yeah. you know in, no, in a year's time hopefully yeah. I can do this more professionally yeah. but oh, it's been amazing to meet you so, so and you as well so, yeah, yeah great. Uh, right um so that's Tom Wright reporting from the space with Joe Catlow Morris Mad Mother Productions <laughs> Mad Mother Productions thank you very much